Author Jonathan Franzen is here. Last year, he won the National Book Award for his novel, The Corrections. It was also named one of the top five books of 2001 by the New York Times. His new book is called How to Be Alone. It's a collection of essays which contemplates subjects ranging from his father's struggle with Alzheimer's to the Chicago post office system. I am pleased to have him back on this program. Welcome back. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to have you. How to Be Alone, essays. I mean, what caused you to put these essays together here in this book now? Um, those essays have been wanting to be a book uh, ever since there were about two of them some six, seven years ago. I've, uh, I've been writing, while I was writing my third book, um, The Corrections, I was also doing these essays, uh, partly to make money and partly to sort of blow off some kinds of polemical steam, yeah. sort of topical steam. Something would come up like the... Uh, Lewinsky material coming into my newspaper on a Saturday morning, um, the Star Report being foisted upon me, and I would get upset about that. And if you're writing a novel that takes years and years, you can't put that material into the book and expect it to do anything until you're until the book is out some years hence. So to be able to write an essay about it. Um, was attractive, and it, 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 it soothed me to, mm. to be able to get my opinions out quickly. But uh, um, the preoccupations are the same in all the book, in all the essays in the book, and they, the same person wrote all of them more or less at the same time. So I saw them as a, as a unit all along. Uh, you finished corrections like, I think you, I read in the preface, you finished corrections about two, three days before 9-11, 2001, before the World Trade Center? No, it was published. Two or three, published three, published yeah. two or three days. Yeah, no, I finished about uh, a year before. Yeah, yeah. Um, the first one here is it, it was called a word about this book. You know, you say there was a talking about uh, then by third novel, the corrections, which I've worked on for many years, was published a week before the World Trade Center fell. This was a time when it seemed that the voices of self and commerce ought to fall silent. A time when you wanted, in Nick Carraway's phrase, the world to be in uniform had a sort of moral attention forever. Nevertheless, business is business. Within 48 hours of the calamity, I was giving interviews again. And then you go on to talk about the Harper's essay and things like that. Let me go to something very personal. First one here is my father's brain. Right. Tell me about that essay. Um, that essay arose partly by chance. Um, I'm always looking for something to do for The New Yorker, uh, which is a magazine I love and feel like I really lucky to have a good relationship with. And there happened to be a, a good book by David Schenk about Alzheimer's coming mm -hmm. out last summer, early fall. And as I started to think about um, what was supposed to be more or less a kind of scientific update, mm -hmm. um, I realized that there was stuff for my own life, specifically my experience with my father dying of Alzheimer's, um, that I had been thinking about um, and would never want to write about uh, as fiction. That is, it was, I, I, I'd done a kind of, um, bo both because it was too personal and also because my thinking about it was sort of abstract. So mm -hmm. it seemed like a, a good opportunity uh, or a good occasion to write an essay. The piece is essentially about uh, how you don't want to know something you know very well. We knew very well that something was wrong with my father long before he was put in the hospital or a nursing home. Uh, but we told ourselves ever, ever more elaborate stories, that is my mother and brothers and I, told ourselves ever more elaborate stories to try to conceal from ourselves that which we knew. Mm. Um, and that state of both knowing and not knowing um, uh, and um, the, the sort of will to hold something together was mirrored by what my father himself was doing as his world fell apart. Um, and uh, he both knew and didn't know what was going mm -hmm. on with him. And the whole thing became an opportunity both to um, you know, share experiences with other people who have Alzheimer's in the family uh, and also to make some sense of the way storytelling is not just something we do f uh, in a casual way, you know, at bedtime for reading, but is actually 
part of how we construct our world and how we construct each other. Mm. Uh, my father was both himself, but also he was the story I told about him. Um, I had an image of him in my mind. And the thing about Alzheimer's is as the personality is subtracted uh, from a person, um, as there's less and less of the old self there, um, what the person who knows him brings to it becomes ever more important. Um, uh, what I remembered of him uh, became more important as he remembered less. Mm. Kathy Chetkovic. Chetkovic, yes. Chetkovic. Ch Ch Chetkovic. Who is she? Who is she? She's the woman of my life. Okay. She's the woman on the train. She's the, she's she's the, the dedicatee of the book she's as well. Woman, yeah, yes. She's the woman on the train. She's the person coming in from California. Yeah. You say that this, these essays mark an end of cynicism. Do I? Do you? Do you oh, believe they do? No, I, I, no, no, uh, no, <laughs> no. An, an era of cynicism, this is not. No, no, I don't think, maybe someone said that about this. Yeah. No, I, uh, it, this is they, not they, the they, end, they, they sort of, they, they don't bridge an end of an era of cynicism for you. No, I think I started in a very despairing place back in the mid-90s, uh, really worried about reading and writing and some of the values of individuality mm -hmm. and individualism that are attached to the sort of solitary pursuit of reading and writing. Um, that seemed threatened by uh, psychotropic medications, uh, yeah. ever more seamless consumer enchantment, um, and... Uh, uh, the sort of mass behavior of all kinds. Um, I'm less worried now. And somehow I got from that point of feeling really radically alone and despairing to feeling like, well, yes, I'm alone and it's good to be alone. And somehow, and so, alone. yeah, exactly. So the, 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 if there's a larger schema to the book, it's charting that movement from a place of feeling uh, really alienated and despairing to still alone but okay with it. You also talk in here about the, the uh, Harper's Magazine piece that got so much attention about you know the end of the novel. Right, right. Now, have you changed your mind about that? Has time given you any well, even in perspective the on that? Um, that? That piece is sort of that schema I just talked about in yeah. a microcosm in a way because it starts with feeling there's just no point at all to write a book. I mean yeah. there's uh, um, no one is no Reading. one cares. Yeah, yeah right. no one no uh, and it's, it's, why pretend that a novel is going to have any so, sort of social effect. But even by the time I was done with that essay I found some reasons to write and had gotten back to work on my own novel. Mm -hmm. Even so, even by the time you finished it, you were beginning to. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that essay is, sort of reproduces that movement itself. You write about the laws of privacy in America. I write about the fact that we're told that it's a terrible problem that we uh, don't have as much privacy as we used to, which seems to me a strange assertion in this uh, country where every aspect of life is dedicated to privacy big vehicles, big houses, uh, gated communities, yeah, exactly. uh, privatized economy. Uh, it, it, there's an essay in here which tries to turn that on its head and say that what we're really lacking is yeah. some sense of a, uh, a civic life, a public life, that that's what's being destroyed. That's what got me so upset about the Star Report in the paper yeah. uh, was I don't want this thing landing on my breakfast table. Um, people are telling me I should be worried about my privacy, and I feel like here's all this private stuff erupting into public. And who's looking after the public space? Uh, people are talking on cell phones on the sidewalk. It used to be I could feel nice and anonymous, and suddenly I'm having private conversations inflicted on so, me. So what is that, then? How would you define what that is? I would actually say that, that we need, that people need to have uh, a private life and we need to have um, some place that isn't private. We need a public space. And that uh, any kind of violation of that distinction is painful, whether it's some sort of public 
prying into the private space, but likewise, when you have too much kind of bedroom stuff um, spilling over into the street and particularly into Washington. So, uh, you know, I like the fact that there's such a thing as a place where everybody pretends that everyone's looking at them. And um, the sort of, you know, lie in the bedroom and type on your laptop kind of stuff, if that's the, ol if that's the whole world, that's a, you know, that's kind of... That's a bedroom world. It's not. It's not that uh, that exciting grown-up world that I wanted mm -hmm. to be part of when I was a kid. Um, I feel like we were uh, promised that there would be this time when we wouldn't have to be children, and now it kind of turns out that we remain perpetually adolescent. And what do you think of first-person confessional journalism? What do I think of first-person confessional you know, just, journalism? You know, in a sense, people constantly writing in the first person about their own. You mean like I do and how to be alone? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I thought. You know, uh, the, there's an I voice, I think, in every piece in here. Uh, and has to be. And has to be. But getting back to what I was saying about my father mm -hmm. and, and, and constructing um, narratives, I feel like I construct an I. It takes me weeks or months to write an essay. And that I on the page is not really, that, that I is much smarter than me and much more together than me. I mean, I'm a mess in my day-to-day -day life. I, in what way? Well, you know, I'll think one thing one morning and the opposite thing the next, <laughs> and, you know, uh, I, I, I'm quite inarticulate. Um, I'm doing my best to sound articulate here, but I'm yeah. basically like and sort of and in a way. Yeah. Uh, the, the, every sentence has those phrases in it. Um, and on the page, I'm allowed to kind of, again, have that, public aspect of, well, I'm really Dignity well put together. Put together I've and, got my yeah. tie on. Yeah, I, yeah and, right. I've thought... You know, that's I, not really me. Yeah, I know. It's I just a, sort you're, of a public me. You're rumpled. This is what David Gage in the New York Times book review said about the corrections. While we're under its enchantment, it temporarily eclipses whatever else we may have read, everything we want in a novel, except when it's rocking along for it never to be over. Mm. And John Leonard, you will laugh, wince, groan, weep, leave the table, and maybe the country promise never to go home again and reminded, and be reminded of why you read serious fiction in the first place. That's enough to send you back to the computer. Um, it is actually literally enough. Uh, a couple of really good reviews, you know, you feel like you've where are registered you? somewhere. And where are you in the next novel? Uh, where am I in the next novel? I'm about a year of frustration and confusion into it. Um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm down near the bottom of the submerged iceberg, kind of peering up toward the surface of the water. Now, do you have any doubt that you're on the right track or not? Totally, yeah. You, to you don't yeah, know. Yeah, no, no. I mean, you don't know if this is a right, store that has legs? The right, well, no, no, I do know that. That is, I don't, I don't have doubt about my ability to write a good book. I have lots of doubt about what it's going to look like. Um, I try to write in a way out of doubt oh, at this oh, point. Oh, I'm not talking about doubt about whether you have the ability to write a book. I'm talking about whether, you know, you have a story. A novel is a story. You know, that this is a compelling story that will give you an opportunity, you know, to dazzle and to inform and to, you know. You know, though, just a couple of months before I was done with the corrections, I was still... Unsure. Grasping people by the lapel saying, there is no story here. There is no story here. <laughs> yes. So I'm, uh, you know, uh, there's some relief in knowing a little story goes a long way. Okay, and, and in knowing, in fact, if you, don't, if you feel that way, it all is not lost. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> um, how do you write? How do I write? Uh, slowly, painfully? No, 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 yeah, we're very good. I mean, fair play, uh, fair play. <laughs> I mean, do you get up in the morning and say... Yeah, I get know, up in the morning. Uh, I get up in the morning. And go immediately, you know, go immediately as soon as you're just conscious? Yeah, uh, uh, actually sort of pre-conscious. Pre the, the coffee is had at the desk. <laughs> yeah. and, um, oh, so actually go right to the desk. That's right. It starts out great, and, uh, and it proceeds yeah, into yeah. ever and, more and, horrible and, but scenes. It's all the, and, and are you writing chapter by chapter, or are you just, you know, you, uh, because you've had an inspiration for some dialogue, or you've had an inspiration for place, or you've had an inspiration for um, character change, or something? It, it proceeds on all fronts. It's sort of a guerrilla war, um, you know, where, where, wherever the enemy seems to be um, uh, nodding off, there's some opportunity to attack.
Jonathan Franz on How to Be Alone, essays by the author, as we have talked about here, Corrections, uh, which won uh, the very prestigious National Book Award. Thank you. Thank you. Be good and have fun on your vacation or whatever you would call yeah. the next period. Getting some work done is the vacation. Yeah. Uh, or celebration or whatever. Uh, sense to be able to take yourself away from public appearances, which is really what it's about, isn't it? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Do anything until you're, until the book is out some years hence. So to be able to write an essay about it um, was attractive, and it it, it it soothed me to mm. to be able to get my opinions out quickly. But uh, um, the preoccupations are the same in all the book in all the essays in the book, and they the same person wrote all of them more or less at the same time. <laughs> nice to have you. How to be alone essays. I mean, what caused you to put these essays together here in this book now? Um, those essays have been wanting to be a book uh, ever since there were about two of them some six, seven years ago. I've, uh, I've been writing, while I was writing my third book, um, The Corrections, I was also doing these essays, uh, partly to make money and partly, so I saw them as a, as a unit all along. Uh, you finished Corrections like, I think you, I read in the preface, you finished Corrections about two or three days before 9-11, 2001, before the World Trade Center? No, it was published. Published. Published two or three, three, yeah. three days. Yeah, no, I finished about uh, a year before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the first one here is, it, it was called a word about this book. You know, you say there was a talking about Author Jonathan Franzen is here. Last year he won the National Book Award for his novel, The Corrections. It was also named one of the top five books of 2001 by the New York Times. His new book is called How to Be Alone. It's a collection of essays which contemplates subjects ranging from his father's struggle with Alzheimer's to the Chicago post office system. I am pleased to have him back on this program. Welcome back. Hi. Hi. To sort of blow off some kinds of polemical steam, sort of topical steam, something would come up like the uh, Lewinsky material coming yeah. into my newspaper on a Saturday morning, um, the Star Report being foisted upon me, and I would get upset about that. And if you're writing a novel that takes years and years, you can't put that material into the book and expect it to...